Hello. Did you know that it's really easy to grow more roses from the ones that you have in your garden? In today's video, I'm going to show you the simple processes that you need to do so that you can grow even more these beautiful flowers in your garden. I'm Liz Zorab and this is By The Farm. And to do this, you're going to need some very basic tools. Uh, so this is a cup of water, just like the plants, I need to stay uh, hydrated. Um, and I like to wear gloves when I'm gardening. I'm gonna need a pot of some sort and some compost. You're gonna need a label. Um, I'm going to actually use a white chalk pen on the outside of the pot and you'll need some secateurs. If you're going to be gathering quite a few cuttings or you're getting them from a friend's garden and therefore traveling home with them put them in a plastic bag and seal it to minimize the moisture evaporation these two rose plants uh, i grew from cuttings this one was climbing up the wall um, outside our last house which was a rented property and um, when we bought this place and moved in here the day that we left i took a little cutting I'm delighted to say that um, it's grown really well and it's scrambling up and over the arch. I had hoped that by now it would be uh, right over the archway, but maybe <laughs> by the end of this summer. I've filled my pot to about here. I haven't packed the soil in, so it's quite loose and it's molehill. Uh, and bought in compost because that's what I have but I don't have masses of uh, bought in compost because otherwise I might use that but what you grow it in doesn't matter too much as long as you keep it in the right conditions so now I'm going to choose which stems to take a cutting from and I want to make sure that uh, whatever I choose doesn't have flower buds on it because I want the plant to put all its energy into growing roots and not into producing flowers the very soft growth at the top is soft wood and the very hard woody stems at the bottom are hard wood and the bit in the middle which isn't very hard and isn't very soft is a semi-ripe cutting and those are the ones for me that are ideal for roses. So I'm going to cut this stem and then I'm going to see where a leaf comes down and meets the upright stem and I'm going to cut just below that and then carefully you can either peel off or you can cut off all the lower leaves you need to mind your fingers you don't snip those and the reason that you're taking the leaves off is to reduce the amount of evaporation and therefore the amount of stress that this plant is going to be under. I'm actually going to take off a bit more and you can if you want to take off part of a leaf or part of a leaflet set and so there I have one cutting. Now this might be too long for my pot but I'll cut it down when I get there and again I'm going to do the same with this one. Remove the lower leaves If you take your time over this, it gives you a chance to assess the health of the plant. So I can see there's actually quite a lot of young aphids on this, uh, which means that there's probably aphids all over this plant. And it might be time to go and find a ladybird and move it over to the plant in the hope that a ladybird will deal with the aphids. Now you want to get your cuttings into your compost as quickly as possible. So I'm going to check uh, for length. I think this is a little too tall for this pot. I want this to be a bit lower down. So I'm going to use my secateurs and I'm going to look for the next leaf joint where the leaf uh, met the stem. And I'm going to cut just below that. Wonderful. Now this is the point of if you have 
a rooting powder, you can use that. Take the lid off your rooting powder or lotion. Dip the ends in and then tap it off so that there was a minimal amount of the powder on your rose cutting. And then you want to put it in to the compost. But rather than just pushing it in, I like to make a hole. So I've just inserted the pen <laughs> and you could use a pencil or a twig and I've pushed the pen right to the bottom of the pot. Then I can put my cutting in and I'm going to move the compost around it so that it is touching it all the way down. Little tap on the table or do this just to ensure that the compost is actually touching that all around. And then I'm going to lightly firm around the cutting with my fingers to make sure that there is a bit of contact there. I want it touching the stem, but not compacted because otherwise those little roots are going to really struggle uh, to make their way through the compost. And again, with the second cutting, I make the hole as deep as I can. Check the height of the cutting. Actually, this one, no, I'm going to take this one down as well. There we go. And then pop it in. And there you go. Now you can choose to leave the thorns on your cuttings or you can remove them by applying pressure sideways. Um, and that should break them off. Then make sure you dispose of those carefully so that you don't end up standing on them. And then the most important step uh, for these little cuttings is uh, to give them some water. So I'm filling that pot up with water. I'm going to wait until the water comes out of the bottom of the pot. There we go, it's starting to come out of the bottom of the pot. And then I'm going to refill it because I want to be sure that this compost is really moist, um, particularly as we're having uh, quite a warm spell at the moment. And then this pot needs to go um, outside, somewhere sheltered, so out of the wind, but not in a dark place. So I like to put my cuttings um, either outside my polytunnel or outside the greenhouse or even outside my own home where somewhere that I walk on a regular basis and can keep an eye on them. As with all cuttings, you don't want the soil to be soaking wet the entire time because those little stems will just rot, but um, you don't want them to dry out and cause stress to the plant. I don't cover them with a plastic bag. I know some people do to uh, keep the moisture levels up. I find that they work absolutely well like this. So out of the wind, where they can still get a good amount of light. And I will put other pots around them of other cuttings and I leave them out there all year round. So even when it gets really cold, I will just leave them there. And before I put it in a sheltered spot, I need to label it so I know what it is. Now I quite often use these white uh, plastic labels, but I do find that sometimes the writing fades over time and also that I lose those labels. So I'm going to write on the pot with this chalk pen and I'm going to first of all describe what it is. White rose with clusters of flowers. So that gives me a description um, and then if you know the name uh, you could add the name. And I also like to write the date that I took the cutting. So in this case it's the 9th of September 2023. So there we go, uh, really clearly labelled. This needs now to go in that sheltered spot and to uh, wait for either the roots to start appearing out of the bottom or uh, sure signs of new growth. So these are some cuttings that I've taken over the last uh, few years. So let's start with this tiny little red rose. <laughs> Just before we moved from our uh, previous home, I suddenly went, oh, I haven't got any cuttings of the rose that was in the shrubbery in our front garden. <laughs> this red rose uh, also came from Jane. 
except it came from me because I gave it to Jane. Uh, she had it for about 15 or 20 years and then she bought it back. And she bought it back to me about the size of a large football. Uh, so in four years it's, <laughs> it has exploded like this. Um, I'm going to try and take some more cuttings from it this year. I don't deadhead it as often as I might. Uh, in fact, I can even see hips on it uh, from last year still, uh, which I didn't then uh, use in the kitchen. But it does these <laughs> beautiful displays of uh, little red flowers. So they're not huge. They're not... They're very, very lightly fragranced. I was going to say they're not fragranced at all. They're very lightly fragranced, but just en masse. I find these just so attractive. I was surprised how large that rose plant got. But I want to show you how it works. Um, this poor plant really doesn't have a very uh, nice compost with it. I have potted it on a couple of times. Um, you can see there are roots here. This is more than ready to go into the ground and I'm going to plant that today so I'm not too worried about having dropped the compost everywhere. Give it a little drink in the meantime though. This is a pale pink rose uh, and usefully my label says pale pink rose. Uh, but what I'm not sure is whether it's a climber or a shrub rose and... I think it's a cutting that I took from my neighbour's house uh, at the old place. Um, there are unfortunately I've let quite a lot of small weeds grow in this. So here we go. And again, a, a good root system. Um, and what tends to happen is the piece that you put in uh, will grow roots and then the next year you'll get new growth from it. This has actually been in the pot for, I think, three years now and desperately needs some more soil and more nutrition. But in the spirit of keeping it real, as during the move, an awful lot of the plants got neglected and a, a lot of them now needs to be potted on or into the ground. So again, I'll give that one a water. And then this little rose was the rose that's in the hedge at the front of our house and it's been there a very long time. Uh, I asked a rosarian to identify it for me. So thank you, Michael. He identified it as Felicity a Perpetuae. I think that's how we're saying it. Um, and I took this cutting on the 23rd of October, uh, 2021. So almost two years ago. So it's got a nice root system on it. It's got Oh, lots of little weeds again um, and so here's the cutting that I took originally that's the piece that then went the first year and the second year it sent up some a new growth um, from under the ground this is yes again struggling and I do need to pot this on or plant it up very soon it's a rambling rose so it'd be really nice to plant it to go over one of our fences or up into a hedge I wanted to show you uh, that it really does work. So my success rate is somewhere between 50% um, and 10%. So by no means do I get every single cutting to take every time. But because it means we can have free roses, I'm very happy to uh, make the attempt to put in the work, to wait the time and see what happens.